My name is Jim Port. I'm Executive Director for MDTA. And I'm Will Pines, the Chief Engineer for MDTA. Well, thank you for joining me today. We're here to talk about the Bay Bridge, and we're here to talk about the rehabilitation project that you guys are working on. Could you please give us a brief overview of what the rehabilitation project is? So the ongoing project that is on the westbound span is primarily for deck rehabilitation. We are replacing the top surface of the deck of the right lane of the bridge. There's about 12,000 feet of that deck that based on our studies are deficient and need replacement. In addition to the deck overlay work that we're doing, there's also rail post replacements gantry replacements, and other priority repairs that will be necessary, along with some joint work for the project. So what's that sequence look like? The project is very linear in nature, where everything that you have to do is step by step in a certain sequence. So the process starts with setting up the lanes to configure the work zone, where we restripe the bridge and then put out the barrier. Once all of the work zone is established and in place, then you're able to run what's called a mechanical milling machine. That takes off a constant depth of about an inch and a half off the deck so that you get that bulk concrete of the original surface off. As you, we were walking up here, you could kind of see the debris and everything that we had collected from the cleanup operation. We then come behind with what's called hydro milling. So the ongoing operation that you're observing right now is the hydro milling machine. This removes all defective concrete and as you can see is a wet process. It uses high pressure jets to take out any defective concrete down to sound concrete. One of the things that we want to explain is that this wet process, if you see the bulkhead here, that is meant to contain all of the effluent from the wet hydro milling process. So you see all of this cementitious water that's developed from that process. We have to contain all of that so that it doesn't go into the bay. And behind me here, you can see this machine that is like a sweeper truck that collects up all the bulk debris. And then they come through and methodically pressure wash and remove all of this and it all has to be pumped back to frack tanks to take off site. But what I also want to show you is how they start collecting some of the debris down here. So when people say, hey, why can't we drive on it? Well, here's another reason why you can't drive on it right now. And so you can see on this milled surface that's after the hydro milling and after the hydro milling cleanup, there's a lot of reinforcing steel that's been exposed. So what that's showing us is that the top surface that we had originally expected was primarily above the rebar, but because of the amount of deterioration in the deck, significant portions of the rebar had been exposed from the milling operation. In this specific case, you can see the top mat here, we tied in a new bar where this bar wasn't connected originally, but we're down to the second mat from our milling operation in a number of areas. That is the bottom mat of the steel, so any deeper and you're completely through the deck and an overlay operation is no longer feasible. So I feel like this is not ideal. No, this is not ideal. This is <laughs> this is one of those areas that isolated areas that we talked about before where there's a full punch through. And so we will probably create a larger area where we'll do a bigger pour uh, for the entire deck. But again, this this is the kind of stuff you don't necessarily find on a core boring, but as you do the work on the deck, the milling, as well as the hydroblasting, these are the types of things that you find. So we get a better idea of, again, exactly why we had to do this project now, and we could not wait two or three years. If we waited two or three years, much more of this deck would look like this, and we'd have to do a complete redecking project. And how long would a complete redecking project have taken? So the redecking project takes about four to five years to complete. Uh, you could do more of that at night. However, it's about eight times as more expensive. It'd be about 230, 260 million dollars compared to 27 million that we have on this project. One of the questions people ask is why are we closing down the middle lane during the day? And if you could explain this process that's going on right now, this is the middle lane is closed down to allow them to do what? Okay, so what you're seeing is they are actually laying the, the latex modified concrete at this moment. You can see that they have to shut down the center lane to do this because the truck 
that dispenses the concrete has to be in that lane over there. It cannot drive on this rebar, obviously, right? You can't have the truck in front of the operations. So we have to have it beside the operations. You can see how quickly the truck is unloading that concrete and how quickly they're laying it out to keep this operation moving. So we must close that second lane to do this. The other important part about this is we have to do it in temperatures that are 45 degrees and rising. And you can't just close down a portion of the center lane because you have a line of trucks here in the center lane from the contractor with the cementitious material. That's correct. So what you've seen, you saw about eight trucks here, right? And this concrete is basically mixed right, in the, right on the spot, right where they're doing it, just before they pour it. So it has the right mixture, the right textures and everything so that it'll adhere to this other concrete that they're laying it on. So this is a really important part of this process. But you can see they've done, they've done about 20 feet since we've, we've just been standing here for what, five minutes or so? They've done about 20 feet. And so they're rolling. And then there are people behind them who will lay the burlap down once it starts uh, to cover to, up the cement, to cover up the cement and to allow moisture to continue to get into the cement. And then they'll put plastic over top. They'll put a blanket over top, a, blank pla a black blanket so that it absorbs the sun rays and continues to heat up the surface. To maintain that constant temperature that you need for the cure. That's correct. And then they'll put plastic over top of that and then they'll put some pipes down to hold the plastic down. So it's a, it's a very, very intense process, a lot of labor that has to go into this to complete this process. And you were also telling me earlier that you guys are monitoring the, the weather constantly to find out when do you have the opportunities to close down that lane, get these guys in here and make some progress. That's correct. So you all have been clear, the public's been clear that they want a quicker process. This could be the coldest November in Maryland history, okay? So we're losing our nighttime pours. So we had to think differently. We had to think creatively and we had to allow them to do the daytime pours. We know it's a little inconvenient, but it's the only way to get this project moving quicker. Even though we are in a period now where we're really only pouring during the day, there's still ongoing work operations at night, every night. We are working seven days a week. The contractor's working generally in two shifts, where there's a shift change early in the morning and then late in the evening. And that night operation right now is doing things like prepping the deck, doing some of the milling operations that we talked about, and also setting up that screed machine so that each morning they're ready for that next pour that's coming up. So we are, we've got a number of crews out there that are working both shifts. And so when the we do that nighttime operation, we do close the entire westbound span and go into two-way on the eastbound bridge every night. As you can see, it's a from start to finish, it's a pretty long operation, which is why when we laid out this project, we obviously could not restore it in like an overnight fashion or something like you might do in like a rapid repair kind of process. You guys have everything going on at the same time on the bridge all day. Absolutely. Everything going on at the same time, uh, all at the same time from different zones. So as you can see, they're, they're continuing to work all these different crews. So when people say they don't see anybody working, some of it is because of this gawk screen. Some of it's because the guys, as you can see, are, late, are, are down low where you cannot see them. But as you can see, operations are continuing to flow through the entire process. And quite frankly, we don't want you to see them. We don't want you to be distracted while you're on a bridge in an 11-foot lane going over the bay, okay? Uh, one of the things that, that disturbs us is we actually see people trying to take pictures as they're going across the bridge of the workers and stuff. And that's, that's extremely dangerous to yourself and others uh, that may be driving. And you also have to slow down to do that. So when you slow down to do that, you're actually causing the traffic back up. So we would hope that people would discourage, uh, be discouraged from doing that. Right. And you guys also have people hanging off the side of the bridge, don't you? We do. So as I mentioned, part of the work operation includes doing rail post replacements. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we also have a number of different contractors. In addition to this westbound deck rehabilitation contract, we also have a rehabilitation contract in our suspension span. The th through truss section of the bridge has an ongoing painting contract. So these contractors have to work around each other. They're under the bridge. They're on top of the right. bridge. They're everywhere. Right. Now, I know a lot of people understand that work needs to be done. 
The concern, of course, is traffic. Are there any future plans to help alleviate some of the traffic issues that have been going on? So currently, um, following on the governor's uh, directives that he gave to us to advance this project and also come up with some traffic relief measures that we coordinated with locals, we are advancing all electronic tolling at this facility at the Bay Bridge. Uh, that's in the works now. We anticipate that that system will be able to go live in early next summer. The fabrication of the steel gantry, the permitting process, all of the steps that are necessary to implement that are things that we're working through now to get that in place. Uh, secondly, we also are implementing a automated gate system that will allow for us to do closures and to do go into the two-way operation in a more rapid fashion. So these are steps that we're taking to, that will help to improve tra traffic operations and safety. However, uh, I think it's noteworthy and kind of consistent with what the governor said that these are not measures that are going to eliminate congestion at the Bay Bridge mm -hmm. permanently. That's what the Bay Bridge crossing study is about. Right. Really, you know, the only solution long term for to relieve tra traffic permanently at the Bay Bridge is to build a new crossing. And that's why we applaud the governor on his first steps with the NEPA study. All right, could we uh, talk about Thanksgiving weekend? That's coming up very soon. And I know plans have changed a little bit. Uh, what changed from the original plan and why? Okay, so this is probably one of the most misunderstood things of all. Uh, when people say that the project wasn't well planned out, I would push back and say it was extremely well planned out. Uh, guys like Will and others in our planning group, uh, these engineers did a fabulous job of looking at the project seeing what could be completed without trying to disrupt as much traffic as possible. Now, obviously the best time for us to do this project is the spring and summertime, mm -hmm. which would be horrendous for the community. Right. So we have to do it in off-peak periods. You heard Will talk earlier that we need 45 degree temperatures and rising to lay the concrete. So it's a big challenge for us to do it during the winter months. So the original plan was to do it over two seasons because they wanted people to be able to uh, utilize the bridge during Thanksgiving time period. To do that, the contractor, based on weather, cold weather, and not being able to pour concrete, would have had to back up their schedule about four weeks, four or five weeks, to guarantee that they would have it milled, hydroed, and the latex modified concrete laid and cured so that people could drive on it. And then, of course, they would have had to remove all the barriers and do some restriping so that you could utilize the lanes uh, safely. Right. All the contractors that we talked to said there's no way you can do that in one year because of the time constraints with the weather conditions and the fact that they had to have it available for that Thanksgiving it made it impossible. They had to do it over two seasons. So that was very well planned out from a traffic management standpoint. We heard that people want it done quicker. We changed the plan. And we changed it so that we would allow the, the contractor to work throughout the Thanksgiving time period. Mm -hmm. By making this decision, we believe we can shorten that time frame uh, to less than two years and that's our goal right now and it's really quite frankly dependent on the weather and being able to lay the latex modified concrete. We understand that the traffic over the holiday season is always bad, right? right? I don't care where you go, if you're on 95, if you're on 695, you're on 495, you're on 97 or you're on the Bay Bridge, you're gonna run into traffic over the busiest travel time of the year and we're putting out alerts letting people know that if you need to be somewhere you need to plan to go earlier yeah, we expect um you know five mile backups and uh in some cases uh possibly on sunday uh up to 10 mile backups so we cannot stress enough that you need to prepare or you need to travel during the times that we are putting on our website and uh, throughout our advertisements. So leave early, 
If you're going Black Friday shopping, Leave early, stay pack late. a turkey sandwich. <laughs> yeah. So, you, so during Thanksgiving weekend, will you be doing anything with tolling to alleviate traffic? Yes, uh, similar to what we're doing on Thursdays and Fridays currently, uh, we're going to do CASA's tolling from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Wednesday through Saturday uh, to allow the public to get through the toll booths a little quicker. Uh, again, Governor Hogan's been very clear uh, to try and mitigate the situation best we can. Uh, at the end of the day, we understand it's a volume problem uh, as far as how many people want to cross that bridge at the same time but uh, we will be doing cashless touring during those periods. So how long will this new bridge surface last? So a latex modified concrete overlay uh, based on a lot of national research lasts upwards of <coughs> 25 years. However, we replaced the left lane and the center lane roughly in the early 2000s, so pushing you know 10 years ago now, 15 years ago in some areas. So the overall deck uh, life is really based on the duration of when those two lanes would be needed for work. So we estimate that um, even considering this new work we're doing, we will need to be back somewhere in the 10 to 15 year time frame to do additional work on this deck. We have this project going on, but you guys have some more work coming. I know you've already talked about the, the gate system. Could you elaborate some more on that? Sure. So the gate system, uh, much like for anyone who may travel in Virginia and use their express toll lanes on I-95, those reversible lanes utilize a gate system to control the entrance into those toll lanes. By uh, we similarly controlling the, the crossovers for the two-way operation can leverage that same kind of gate system to shorten the duration that it takes to implement two-way, which uh, when we do a two-way operation, we have to stop all vehicles for a period, and that kicks off congestion right away when we do it. So that would greatly shorten with this gate system and, and help the motorists traveling. And then secondly, uh, it helps us to pick up work operation time. As we can all see living this project, it's getting more and more difficult for us to complete work at the Bay Bridge due to how frequent the congestion periods are. And so by having uh, all electronic tolling, a gate system, things like this, it helps us to improve our traffic operations. Right. I know we talked about it briefly, but this will not affect anyone driving, right? This will be something that happens overnight. You'll barely notice that it's even happening. happening. Right. Most, most of the projects that we have ongoing at the Bay Bridge are painting contracts, the suspension span rehabilitation, and, and these new projects, the gate system. They have off-peak closures, times when there's very few vehicles on the roadway, and we can do closures that don't really impact the public. So we have a couple of Facebook questions. You guys want to take some questions from the public? Sure. 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 And while we're getting those up, I'm going to remind people to get an easy pass. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Not only is it easy for you to get through all the tolls in Maryland, but it's also usable in all the surrounding states. And it's free. That's right, it's free. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, some questions from the public. How many workers do you guys have on this job? And uh, do you employ anyone that's local? The contractor, Wagman Heavy Civil, and with their subcontracted team members that are, are working on the project, we have at up to, as Jim mentioned earlier, 85 workers on the job. Many of them are local and uh, are supporting the, the local economy when they're staying here and, and shopping and doing all the things. We also, uh, the project does include uh, a min minority business enterprise goal mm -hmm. and veteran owned business enterprise goal. And so there are a number of subcontractors out there who are local and also working on the job. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, are there routine inspections by engineers on this project? At MDTA, th there's kind of two types of inspections. Mm -hmm. We have our annual inspection program where we go out and send certified, nationally certified and recognized firms to perform detailed inspections of the overall bridge to ensure that it's safe. Beyond those routine inspections and specific to this project, we also have construction inspectors who are there when we're talking about the two shifts a day and seven days a week. These folks are there during all of those operations to make sure that everything is built per plan and per spec. Gotcha. And, and, and I also had that there, there are boots on the ground, so they're there giving us information on a daily slash hourly basis on what our next processes may be 
in the next one and two days. So that's how we're getting all of our information. Real-time updates. Uh, I like it. Absolute real-time real updates. All right. Why are the orange cones so far up 50? Can they be moved to open up 50 before the bridge? So we're talking about the area probably uh, Duke Street. Route 8. Yeah, Route yeah, 8, on yeah. Uh, Queens County side. The short answer to that question is we've heard this feedback <laughs> and we understand the desire to shorten the length of the closure. And that's something now that we're moving into the winter and we don't have two-way operations any longer on the westbound span, we can pull that closure up. Because when we've been implementing our closures, they can happen very quickly because of how much MOT we are or maintenance of traffic we already have set up. Mm -hmm. If we ha didn't have those devices in place, there's a number of operations that we would be setting cones and taking them out every day rather than pouring concrete and producing actual bridge work. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something that we know is desired, for the, especially for locals who are using the Duke, Duke Street ramp and otherwise, that we're working on. We need to do some restriping and pull that operation in, but it's something that we've heard the feedback, and now that we're out of the period where, where we really need that, that two-way operation, that we can do that. Now, now that being said, as the traffic has been reduced across the bridge during these winter months or closer to winter months, we can do that. As spring starts popping up again, right. we may have to reintroduce them. So there's got to be some flexibility in our operational uh, awareness and, and our operations and how we, how we you know, perform. So we have to, although we might be able to remove them now, they may end up coming back. And so we just need the public to understand there's specific safety reasons why we have to do that. Well, that was a perfect lead-in to my final question. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, is, this is good. There was lots more questions from Facebook and from the public, but you guys actually answered most of them in, in lots of the explanations. But my last question to you is, are there any resources for citizens to get information like what you were just explaining on the project or to stay up to date with construction or patterns? Sure, you can go to our website and you can also contact us for regular alerts. I think one other thing to add is um, we are increasingly relying on social media to help with outreach. Facebook, Twitter is a regular update mm -hmm. thing for us as well. So rely on, on, sign up for Twitter and get alerts for the ongoing operations. Right. Use social media to follow you guys and, and uh, get the news out and get the news that they need to travel safer and more, uh, Absolutely. more it's more reliable. I would just add too to that to, to please be safe when you're coming through our work zones. Mm -hmm. We, our contractor Wagman Heavy Civil, they've been a great partner with us on this project, and uh, we recently, believe it or not, had an incident mm -hmm. where somebody driving through apples at our workers and hit them in the face. Uh, those kinds of things are just really unacceptable. These are guys that are out there in the cold working. 10, 12 hour shifts, and uh, they don't deserve that. They deserve to go home safe to their families every day. So thank you guys for joining us. Mm -hmm. That's all, I'm gonna let you off the hook because I know you guys have a lot of work to do. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy your tour oh, we will. Uh, of the bridge. Yeah, you guys ready to go take a look? Yeah, yeah. good luck. <laughs> for more information on traffic, construction, and commuter options in Maryland, please visit baybridge.com and follow MDTA on social media. Also, visit qac.org slash baybridgeinfo for a complete collection of all Bay Bridge resources.